The six hours of the Glen is the shortest race on the Michelin Endurance Cup schedule, but the iconic Watkins Glen circuit never fails to produce great racing. This year's edition is set to be the largest ever grid for IMSA at this track. How will this affect the racing and who might be able to sneak out with a great result? Let's preview the sail in six hours of the Glen. First, let's start off with some news. Fresh off an excellent showing with Garage 56 for the 24 Hours of Le Mans, Vice President of Competition for Hendrick Motorsports, Chad Knaus, indicated to Sports Car 365 that the Hendrick Motorsports and Action Express Racing number 48 entry that we saw at the end of the DPI era was not likely to continue. The news comes after it was announced that Jimmy Johnson and the NASCAR Cup Series team that he has a stake in, Legacy Motor Club, will be making the switch from Chevrolet to Toyota in NASCAR next season. Now, while Knaus did indicate that it was very unlikely that the number 48 car would be returning to the IMSA grid anytime soon, he did not completely close the door on it happening in the future. And we do know, based on some previous statements from Hendrick Motorsports, that they are interested in expanding their operations to potentially some other forms of racing. Now, reading this news got me thinking. And I will preface this by saying I do believe that it is unlikely, but it got me thinking that could we see a legacy motor club now that they've partnered up with Toyota? Could we see some sort of a partnership with them and have that translate over to IMSA? We know, of course, that Jimmy Johnson has raced on the IMSA grid a, a fair bit over the last number of years. And while I wish that some sort of legacy motor club effort could be with the Toyota GR010 hybrid in the GTP class, I think that's pretty unlikely. And I think that it would be much more likely to take the new Lexus RCF GT3 car that's in the works, but not expected to be race ready necessarily until about 2025. Now it seems that Vassar Sullivan is pretty entrenched in being the factory supported IMSA effort, but perhaps Legacy could look at this as a customer entry, maybe just for the Michelin Endurance Cup, as we've seen Jimmy Johnson compete in in the past. Now look, this is entirely special speculation at this point. But I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda hoping it happens. But with Johnson recently being involved in the Garage 56 entry, this could potentially be an avenue for him to still compete in selected races in IMSA, which it certainly seems, at least the past couple of seasons, that he's been very interested in doing. Now, moving from the 48 and an entry that's unlikely to return, to a manufacturer that's looking to double the number of customer entries they have in IMSA. Porsche LMDH factory director Earls Corradle indicated that there is a big chance that we see additional customer entries on the IMSA and WEC grids for next season. Season. Currently, Porsche has four customer cars slated to hit the track in 2023, with JDC Miller Motorsports rolling out with the first IMSA customer entry. Also to be rolled out is the Proton Competition entry. They will be hitting the track at Road America later this summer. Now, Urs told SportsCar365 that the goal is to have four customer cars in each series, and there has been interest expressed by current Porsche teams about these additional entries. Those reported include Jota, who already have a car featured on the WEC grid. They would be looking at running potentially selected races in IMSA. And as well, there's been an expression of interest from Faf and Kelly Moss. Now things of course are not set in stone and this is just reported interest. But it is expected that we could be seeing some more news about 2024 customer entries after the remaining customer entries have taken to their respective grids. Well, the increased number of entries in the GTP class is just one of a few reasons why the LMP3 class won't be on the IMSA grid next year. However, one of the most successful entries in the class, the number 74 Riley Motorsports entry of Gar Robinson and Felipe Fraga will be sticking around. Riley Motorsports, the team that they run with, has confirmed that they will be stepping up to the LMP2 class in 2024. And Gar Robinson had, I thought it was a hilarious quote when he was asked about the move. He said, it'll be nice to be in a class that everyone doesn't hate. The team expects to receive their LMP2 chassis in August to start preparations for the 2024 season. And in GTD, MDK Motorsports, who initially announced this season that they'd be running a Michelin Endurance Cup entry, will yet again not be present on the grid at Watkins Glen. 
The team initially announced that it would be withdrawing its entry from the 12 hours of Sebring, in part due to the BOP issues that Porsche had to suffer through in the Rolex 24. However, there have been other issues that have emerged for the car, specifically a spare parts shortage that seems to be plaguing the Porsches. Now, this car is, of course, also running in the GT World Challenge America series, and the spare part shortage is the main reason why the car is not gonna be competing at Watkins Glen. That's what team owner Mark Kvames told Sportscar 365. I was too worried about the parts. I have a full-time SRO entry that was actually third in the team's championship right now. I don't wanna mess that up for the customer. But it doesn't make the Watkins Glen grid any less impressive. We'll talk about that in a second. But speaking Speaking of the Porsche BOP, Porsche as well as other competitors have been brought up to a much more competitive level since the Rolex. And IMSA just released the BOP table for the six hours of the Glen. There are weight changes for every single GTP entry with Acura receiving an additional four kilograms, BMW and Cadillac picking up an additional seven kilograms of weight, and Porsche picking up five kilograms. This means that Acura is still the heaviest at 1,053 kilograms, with the Cadillac being the lightest at 1,037. When it comes to power, Acura is maxed out at their 520 kilowatts of power. BMW and Cadillac will receive one additional kilowatt, while Cadillac will receive two kilowatts. This means that Cadillac and BMW are the lowest at 513 kilowatts of power. As well, the BMW, Cadillac, and Porsche all got a slight increase to the energy levels that will be available to them during the weekend. Meanwhile, in the GTD classes, there have been a number of changes made, mostly to the weights of some cars. Corvette will receive a five kilogram weight break. Meanwhile, Lamborghini, McLaren, and Mercedes will all be 20 kilograms lighter, but it's Ferrari who gets the biggest weight break. They will be 30 kilograms lighter. We also see a few restrictor diameter changes with Lexuses being increased by one millimeter, which would translate to about 8.4 horsepower for them. And Corvette gets a 0.3 millimeter increase, which is about 6.7 horsepower increase for them. And on the fuel capacity side, we will see McLaren carrying around five fewer liters, Acura carrying three fewer liters, and Lexus an additional three liters of fuel. Did you know that Off in the S's has a Patreon? If you want to support the show and help me get out to more races this season, then consider checking it out. In return for your support, you'll receive behind the scenes access to things that go on in the channel and regular updates, which may may or may not include a preview of some upcoming merch that I've been working on. The best part is, is that you can start off with a free trial. Just head to patreon.com slash off in the S's or check out the link in the show notes. All right, let's talk about the track now. Now I go into some detail about the sale in six hours of the Glen in a recent episode, but here's a quick breakdown for you. The 11 turn 3.4 mile circuit is located in the Finger Lakes region of upstate New York and features 115 feet of elevation change. You start a lap of Watkins Glen down the high speed front straightaway into the heavy braking zone for turn one. Watch the corner exit here as uh, track limits will be enforced. Uh, out of there, you head into a quick turn two right-hander into the S's of turn three, and eventually the right-hander of turn four. Very high-speed portion of the track here that leads down the long back straightaway. At the end of the long back straightaway, though, there is the bus stop, or the inner loop. The quick right-left-left-right combination that goes into turn five and the outer loop. Out of turn five, you are going to head down the chute into turn six. A difficult little braking zone here for the left-hander. Important to keep speed up, though, on corner exit as this leads to a small straightaway that heads down into the toe of the boot. The right-hander, again, very important to get good exit speed here. Another straightaway that's going to lead into turn eight. And the heel of the boot, another good passing opportunity. Gotta watch for track limits as well on corner exit. Officials will be looking for that here come race weekend. Into turn nine where you rejoin the old course. Down a short little straight that goes over one of the tunnels into the track, into turn 10. Again, this is a spot where you gotta watch for track limits. Officials will be enforcing that 
this weekend. Into turn 11, the final corner of the track. Again, really important to get a good exit out of here down the long front straightaway, and that completes a lap of Watkins Glen. Now, there are many iconic corners around Watkins Glen, but one that I want to focus on is the bus stop. Interestingly enough about this, it doesn't officially have corner numbers and is just referred to as the inner loop, or commonly also known as the bus stop. It's a fantastic passing opportunity as drivers are carrying a lot of speed out of the S's and down the straightaway before braking hard and having to really attack the curbs. You gotta be careful though because you don't wanna make the car too unstable as the exit of the bus stop is equally as important going into the medium speed carousel corner. The set of corners is a great test for drivers, and it's also a great spot to watch the race from. Now 57 entries will be on the grid for this year's sail in six hours of the Glen. That's nine more than were featured on the grid in 2022, and the largest IMSA grid ever for the race. There will be nine cars featured in the GTP class, nine in the LMP2 class, 10 in LMP3, nine in GTD Pro, and 20 cars in the GTD class. Notable entries that return to the grid include the AF Corsa LMP2 featuring Lila Wadu, Luis Perez Compang, and Nicholas Nielsen. This will be Wadu's first IMSA start, and she recently became the first female to win a race in the WEC. AF Corsa's GTD Pro Car returns as well, along with another Ferrari for Risi Competizione, and Iron Lynx returns to the Pro class with their Lamborghini. Meanwhile, in GTD, NTE Sport returns to the grid, featuring a new purple livery. 162 laps were completed by the victorious Wayne Taylor Racing duo of Ricky Taylor and Felipe Albuquerque in 20. 22. Other class winners included in LMP2 the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry of Ben Keating, Mikhail Jensen, and Scott Huffaker. Meanwhile, in LMP3 it was the number 74 Riley Motorsports entry driven by Gar Robinson, K. Van Berlo, and Felipe Fraga. They are going for three wins in a row in this race. On the GTD Pro side was the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin that was driven by Ross Gunn and Alex Riberas. And finally, in GTD, it was the number 27 sister heart of racing Aston Martin of Roman DeAngelis, Maxime Martin, and Ian James that took the honors. Weather is always something to consider on any race weekend, and we're certainly going to have to consider it for this weekend, it looks like. At the time of this recording, we are still a few days away, and the weather is changing by the hour every time I pull out my phone and, and check the app, it, it seems to be different weather. But as of right now, it looks like it is going to be a rainy weekend for racing. And just be sure to keep your eyes peeled on Racecast Weather on Twitter. They do a great job at updating the weather forecast for the race weekend as the week goes on. Now, as for my picks to win this weekend, in GTP, I'm going all in for Cadillac. That 0-1 entry has been just so strong as of late. But also considering the bloodbath that I expect not only the GTP class to be, but just the race in general, considering the number of entries that are on the grid, as well as the amount of traffic that everybody's going to have to be dealing with, I really think that it, it probably could be anybody's race, especially in GTP. Considering this, and if you want a bold prediction, then I'm going to say that that JDC Miller Motorsports Porsche is going to finish ahead of both of the factory entries. Now in LMP2, Ben Keating is a man on a mission this year. Actually, who am I kidding? He's kind of always a man on a mission. I pick him in the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry to repeat last year's sail in six hours of the Glen victory. And that's not the only car that I think is gonna repeat. I'm picking the number 74 Riley Motorsports LMP3 to win three six hours of the Glens in a row. They've just had some good positive news in their sails with this LMP2 entry now. I think they're gonna carry that through with some momentum into this weekend. You know, maybe I'm just picking entries from last year here because in GTD Pro, I'm going with the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin to repeat. They've struggled up until this point of the season, but this is a strong track for them, of course, having taken the class wins in both GTD Pro and GTD last year. And I think this is a way that they're going to get some really good momentum going in their direction for the second half of the season. Meanwhile, in GTD, I'm going to go with the Turner Motorsports BMW. BMW was just so strong here last year, and I don't think you can go wrong with picking Turner Motorsports to pull out a strong race and a win here at Watkins Glen. Taking a quick look at the point standings here in GTP, it's the Porsche Penske Motorsports number six that leads with 1,307 points. Pretty close battle here with the number 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac who are just 25 points behind them. 
in LMP2. It is the number 11 TDS Racing entry that leads with 730 points. They are 63 points ahead of the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry. LMP3, after just two events, it is the Ligier, number 74 of Riley Motorsports that leads with 380 points. They are 36 points ahead of the number 13 AWA Duquesne. In GTD Pro, the number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus has 1,415 points. They are 41 points ahead of the number 79 WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. And in GTD, it is the number one Paul Miller Racing BMW that leads there with 1,244 points. They are 62 points ahead of the number 70 Inception Racing McLaren. It's not just the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship that are going to be competing at Watkins Glen this weekend, though. The Mazda Itamitsu MX-5 Cup will have the their first race of the weekend on Friday at 12.15 Eastern Time. That'll be followed at 1.20 by the Porsche Carrera Cup for their first race, and at 2.20 by the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series. All of those can be watched on IMSA TV. On Saturday, race two of the Mazda Itamitsu MX-5 Cup goes at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, followed at 11.05 by the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series, and at 12.15 by the Porsche Carrera Cup. WeatherTech Championship qualifying goes at 1.15 Eastern Time, followed by the Salins 120 at the Glen for the Michelin Pilot Challenge. That race is going to be viewable on IMSA TV or Peacock, with the Support Series as well as IMSA qualifying all able to be viewed on IMSA TV. Finally, on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship hits the grid for the Salem Six Hours of the Glen. You can catch the entire coverage of the race on IMSA TV, or from 10.30 until 2 o'clock, the coverage will be on Peacock, followed up from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock on USA Network. Now, I am going to be doing a small meetup for anyone that's going to be there at the track on Saturday during the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series race. And we're going to be doing that at the grandstand that's right by the S's. The race is slated to start at 11.05 and should run until about noon. And we're going to be doing it rain or shine. So if you're around, try and come by and say hi. I'd love to meet you. And make sure to check out the Discord, which is linked in the description, just to keep up to date or if there's any last minute changes. As I mentioned earlier, I recently did a video that goes a little bit more in depth into the sale in six hours of the Glen history. You can check that out right here. A big shout out to all the Patreon supporters. If you too want to support the show, you can head to patreon.com slash off in the S's. Once again, though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend and doesn't go off in the S's.